Hi everyone uh, and welcome back to Norfolk and the Norfolk Broads. I haven't done a video for oof, about a month now I think um, and I haven't done a painting either so uh, I thought I would come in the garage today and um, do something that I've been thinking about for a while. Um, a lot of people who watch my videos and, and try my videos and uh, paintings always say oh you must have um, extremely good lungs um, and they can't do it because for some reason whether it's health whether it's just lung capacity whether it's just can't be bothered they can't blow or you know do the amount of blowing that I do on my painting so um, uh, people have said to me you know in the past is there any other you know something else we can use or something we can do so what I've got today I've got uh, two three one two three four four different uh, bits and pieces here which might help I'm not going to do one of my long floral paintings today if some of these work out then I might try it with the one that I think is more suitable um, so what I've got today um, normal I'm going to do a normal one which is just me blowing and a straw and I've got the little mini blower here which I'm sure a lot of you have got and probably you know a lot of them people could probably do this better than me um, comes off on uh, presses on the only thing I can probably see which is a problem with this so far is this if I was to make one or I was to do one I would have probably had one where you could charge up which didn't have a cable or a cord but that with the hair dryers and everything is always the same so little mini blower then I've got uh, one of these cadoodles which is um, switched on which is a, a compressor and that comes in a box like this and so it's a mini air compressor people do it for pits for painting really for you put your paints in it and blow out the paints but I've got one of these so I'll give a go with that um, so that's three, and I've got hair dryer here, which I, uh, as you know from me, doesn't really go. So I might have a go with one of them just to give you a comparison. Um, this obviously is a few pounds for. I think I bought a pack of a hundred for the straws. This one here, little mini blower in England, cost me I think it was fifteen pounds, um, and I got that on Amazon. I'm sure there's other places that do them, and I'm sure there's other prices, but that's how much it cost me. And this one here, I got on Amazon, and it cost me, if I remember off the top of my head, it was around about £50. So you're going from nothing to around about £15, 50 and then obviously hair dryers, you know, come in all sorts of compartments and prices and, and whatever. Um, once again, reason I don't use a hair dryer, it's just me, it's just my style, it's just what works for me. Um, I will do one with a hair dryer later on. Um, and see how we go on. So I've got four canvases. They're eight by eights with a deep edge and I've prepped them as I normally do. Anybody that's a complete beginner who's never prepped a canvas, there is a video on my YouTube which I think it's about 10 minutes long and it explains how to actually do, and it is an eight by eight, how to prep it ready to paint. So that's that. Um, once again, I've got a a video on the consistency and all the bits and pieces I'm sure people have been bored enough with everything that I do but I'm um, the consistency that and what I'm going to do today I'm not going to do a Dutch pour or anything this is my my consistency of my paint and um, that I use for my paintings and if you want to do my paintings how these will work with the paint to allow you to do my style of painting so you know I know people use them for Dutch pours and know people use them for whatever they do um, as I always say in my videos this is just me it's the way I do things if you want to do the way I do it which some people probably won't some will you know this is what I'm doing I'm giving you the chance to do other things to try and achieve a painting that you're happy with um, so that's it with the consistency I use Floetrol acrylic paint and distilled water I do the same mix for everything so the base the colours, everything that I do is the same mix. I don't do one thinner, I don't do one thicker. I never use house paints. 
um, it's always the same. And the, the mix I do is two parts um, Floetrol, one part acrylic paint, and I use Arteza paints. Um, I know other people use uh, Liquitex or they use other Winsor & Newton or other styles. Each one will vary in consistency of that paint, and that's the difference. And then I do one part of distilled water. I use distilled water because obviously purification of the water and it's the best possible you can use. So that's the mix. Like I say, it's at the minute I've been using slightly more of the distilled water. So it's over, just over one part um, to get the mix I want. Um, and as I said, the paints can be thicker or thinner depending on which brand you use. That will then vary on how much water you add or don't add to that mix, if that makes sense. Um, a lot of the videos I do, I have them all prepped so it saves time. But what I'm going to do today is I've got some paints mixed. There's nothing on the board. Boards are as they are. Um, so that you can see when I actually put it on the board, you can see the consistency as it sits on the board and when I pour it off the board. Um, what I find with a lot of videos, uh, people struggle with this consistency, whether it's getting a feel for it or getting for a feel how it flows. Um, I see a lot of people on YouTube, on uh, Facebook who either complain, excuse me, people don't explain enough or show enough. It's so difficult. Um, I'm not in this to, you know, it's not for me to be, this is a glorified painting. This is for me to show you. So I want to try and do it as best I possibly can, as easy as I can, step by step. Um, there's a lot of people out there that will, you know, have no problem with this, that do it. So it's just that there's beginners and they want to have a look and see. This paint I mixed up about a month ago, um, since the last time I did painting. I normally do three or four of these size tubs of white and a couple of black. Um, and sometimes one of blue, which use me for all my paintings and they sit around. What I do with them is I mix them. Normally I'd leave them overnight if I was going to do a painting, but normally if I've left them, I then cover them in cling film tightly around, take the little stick out, seal them with cling film and leave them. So that's been a month now. Um, and the same with the uh, colors that I mix up and put into some little plastic bottles. They've been sat there for about a month as well now. Um, I thought I get things that probably the tops are stuck over, but that gives you an idea of where you sit with the actual paints and how long you can keep them, how long you can use them, and what you can do with them. Um, so that's that. Um, what else can I say? With these paintings, I'm just going to do odd colours and bits and pieces. They're not. It's not about the painting. It's about showing you how these work with the paintings, how much of push so that you can see how they do them. So that's the idea. So you will see that that is thicker than you would for a Dutch pour. And that's the idea of my paint mix. As it moves, you can see how it flows and how it settles. And the idea I know, I'm not a big Dutch pour expert, never have been, never will be. With Dutch pour is that the thinness of it is better because you can push it quicker, the hair dryers make it go uh, in all directions and it's easy to do. With my paintings, the idea is that when you actually put the paint down and then you go around and you actually then blow it, what you want to do is make sure that the paint is thick enough to hold as it goes out. By doing this, I hope you can see how it's the thickness, the consistency, whichever you want to see from it. I normally have a little white tub which I then pull around. And then, stick, and 
go around with. Always looks like cake mix to me when you make a cake and you put the old uh, icing on. So there you go. That is a basis of me doing a mix onto a canvas. So you can see the thickness, you can see how it pours. And I think one of the things you've got to really get a grip of, and I think what people struggle with, is that when you do this, um, you're never gonna get it right first time. It's gonna take you a couple of times to get it right. Um, it'll take you a couple of times to, to get it to a consistency that you're happy with. So when you actually stir the actual um, paint around, you'll know by the feel of the stir that you're right. When you pour it onto your canvas, you're gonna get a feel of how it flows because you can put a little bit on and it can flow and you think, oh, that's too thick. So you can put some more water in and then you can pour it in. So that's the idea. And that's what we've got there. Get rid of all the now what we're going to do, what we're going to do, I'm going to do um, a turquoise. I'm going to put some David's grey. I'm going to put some yellow. That's what I thought would happen. One of the things that will happen is top is going to go on if you've left them for too long. Right, just put a little bit of orange. And some black. And then, obviously, some more over the top. You're gonna have to bear with this. There's quite a lot going on here. When you get old like I am, um, it's hard to remember what day it is, let alone what we're at. Um, so for my style, I would use my mouth and then I'd use a straw. So here we go. So let's leave that at the minute. So that's one. Same again.
Gen R. Talk guys. Right, so I, I've never used these. That's bad, by the way, it's shocking. Um, so I don't know what it's gonna come out like. So um, I'm presuming if I pull this off first, I'm gonna get a better flow. Cable gloss. So, I don't know, I mean that's not too bad. If I was to play around with it, I'd put some more probably, a bit more purple in there. Better than that one. I'm trying to rush a little bit with this because I just want to get the best we can. And as I said, it's not about the paintings. I can promise you some of these aren't particularly good, but it gets an idea of what you can do rather than me with these methods. So. I'm going to use now. Okay, so we're going to use do some blue.
Here we go. So, I would say Try to redeem myself here. Some of these paintings are shocking. <laughs> but that's that. I wasn't happy with that at all. I couldn't get a feel for that. Um, and then the fourth one. Right. I don't even know if this works. It's been ages to use it. So
So you can see the difference in the actual push. So, as I said, it's not about the actual paintings. This is trying to dig myself out of it. It's about how these have all acted with the paint mix and what you've got from it. Like every painting, I think with this one, if I remember rightly, it was the a little blower. Um, you can see because it's not been strong enough, what it's done is it's mixed some of these colours and made them quite muddy. Um, normally in some of my paintings you wouldn't get that effect because you blow quite consistently, but that's what's caused that. Um, there we go. So, I wouldn't be happy with these. They're not the best paintings I've ever done. Um, I think it's... It's given you an idea of what you can get, what sort of push you can get, what sort of consistency, um, and obviously what happens with each and every one. And I think with this one, 
I've done my dreaded don't do which I've just done and put an orange in and, and some sand bean at the end so that's made that a little bit muddied um, and with each and every one of them I've had to go around myself and use the straw so I don't know if that's a success I don't know if it's giving you any ideas like I say straw and the mouth works for me um, I don't think I've got enough of a blow with this and it's got too much of a, a cord um, so I don't I don't see how that would that would work um, this I don't for 50 pound I don't think that's been as good as it should have been. Um, so, there you go. I'm not really sure if that's helped, if it's not helped. I think what's created is a bit of a mess on uh, a Monday afternoon in Norfolk. But I think it's crucial to, to put these out and to let you see and let you make your own minds and decisions what you think about them. Don't slate me too much. Um, like I said, it's all about the push and the air and what you can do. So, um, I think what I'll do is I'll probably scrap all of these and try again later on something else. But um, for the purpose of the video, I think it's it's worked to a degree. Um, it's given you an idea, either good or bad, for what you want to spend, what you want to invest. I'm sure somebody else will come out and tell me that they've done it different and they've done it better, which they probably will. Um, so that's it. Um, what I'll do is I'll take the camera down. If I lose you, sorry. So that was the original. That was the second one, I think. That was a hairdryer. Now you can see why I never use a hairdryer. Um, but you can see the push and how they've worked. Um, I'm sure if I practiced a bit more on them, I'm sure if you practice a bit on them, you can do a better job than I've done. Far, far better. Um, if I was to do my floral paintings, what would I use? I wouldn't use a hairdryer because that wouldn't work. Um, I certainly wouldn't use the compressor because I don't think I'd get enough push. I might go for the mini blower with a straw and see what effect I got from that. So I apologise about the state of the paintings. I um, hope you take it in the context that it's done, which is just to show you the different uh, pieces of equipment. And hopefully we can see where we go from there. I'm probably going to play around with these before I put them on uh, to Facebook. But listen, the sun's shining. Can't be that bad. I hope you're all well across the world, wherever you are. Um, and a great thanks to everybody that subscribed to my channel. Um, I managed to get across 3,000 subscribers now, so I'm totally ecstatic about that. Um, I'm going to stop talking, I'm going to go and sulk somewhere about these paintings, and um, I wish you all well, and I'll see you next time. Next video I'm going to do is varnishing, which a lot of people have asked for, and hopefully we can have a better attempt at varnishing than we have on little 8x8 canvases. Take well. <laughs> Stay well, I hope you're okay, and um, I'll see you again soon. Take care, all the best from Norfolk. Thank you, bye.